In this video on Master Fader, we're going to discuss vocal compression. We're not going to discuss compressors for snare drums or bass guitars or anything like that. We are specifically going over vocal compression. And this is a live recording, so this will be a good example of a vocalist that, in my opinion, is over the top. Turn her up a little bit. Oh, piercing. See that yellow right there in the middle. Okay. So, first of all, let's listen to that one more time because before we're going to just slap a compressor on her because we know that her dynamics are quite excessive, we need to tame them. We don't want to take her dynamics away. We just want to minimize them. Let's listen again because there's something we need to fix here way before the compressor. Listen again. And I'm so happy for the red love my So, right there in the middle, right around there, we're going to use one of these four bands of EQ to correct that. Now, these can be moved all over the place. I like to keep them in order, one, two, three, four, from left to right. So this is mid-range. It's not treble. It's not bass. It's one of these two in the middle, the two or the three. I say let's use the two. And let's dip that. Let's make it real narrow where the Q down here. Let's make it narrow. And let's listen again. And what we're going to do when we hear that piercing frequency, we're going to raise this up and sweep it around until we can find exactly where it is. Let's switch this to RTA. All right, here we go. One more time. Okay, so now that we know the exact frequency, now we can take the gain slider. And here's what it was before we did anything. Now it sounds better already because our ears have adjusted. But let's cut that frequency. Much better. Now, does it sound unnatural? Let's cut it all away. Yes, that sounds unnatural. We took her note away. We don't want to take it away. We just want to make it sm sound smoother, not so piercing. Okay, we're taking a little too much away. Now, let's go to the compressor. You know these swipe areas. Here's the swipe area right here. Another one down here. There's swipe areas here too. All right, let's go to the compressor. Let me explain a few things about these slide widget controller dealy bumps. So the threshold, I refer to the threshold as threshold of pain. We want to use this compressor to lower the volume of certain things when they're just too loud. Compressors are great because they are able to respond much quicker than we could yank a volume control down. So the threshold is the adjustment for the volume at which the person or the singer or the instrument or the sound is going to reach a point of pain. Anything above that the compressor will cut the volume. But it's only going to cut the volume a little bit if we have the ratio turned way down. Ratio is the difference between 
how many decibels the compressor will pull down based on how loud she sings above the threshold. So let's listen to that phrase again. We have the ratio set all the way down. Threshold is not set. Believe it or not, it looks like it's all the way up. We think of threshold as turning, not turning the volume down, but lowering the threshold or raising the threshold. Okay, now I'm going to lower the threshold. So what I'm telling the compressor is that it can compress some things. I'm going to turn the ratio up a little bit so it does something. I'll get back to that in a minute. We're going to lower the threshold so that a lot more stuff is going to get compressed. You'll see the gain reduction right there in the red. Let me explain these meters here in the center. The meter on the left is input gain. You'll see at the very bottom it says in. The other green meter is out. That's input versus output. The red meter is running upside down. It's running to show you how many decibels that the compressor is turning down or attenuating. Let me go back and turn her volume up so we can hear better. Yeah, so the compressor obviously is turning down her volume way too much. Virtually everything she's singing, the compressor thinks it's too loud. So, now it thinks everything is too loud. We don't want that. Turn it all the way up like that. Turn it off so it's not even running. Okay, so let's turn up the ratio. Let me explain the ratio. If we don't have any ratio turned up, the compressor knows by the threshold setting that it's too loud, but it has not been given permission by us to know how much it's supposed to turn down relative to how loud she's singing. A very common industry standard ratio for vocals is three to one or four to one. You can see at the very top there, it says four to one. That will give us some compression, but not so much that we're squashing the living crap out of it. Let's listen again. Now let's lower the ratio and listen to how that's not turned down as much. Listen again. Now we're gonna turn her down even less. It's gonna not compress as much. Now it's not gonna compress at all. Now it's going to compress a lot. But notice it's not compressing very much more at all on those first few notes. But notice what happens when she gets to those. So that is the threshold of pain, the ratio, attack. How quickly? does the compressor respond to a really fast, loud note? Now let's set this attack way high. Let's see at the top again. You're, you're able to see all the values of anything you're changing at the top. There's a quarter of a second. That's a long time. Let's listen to what happens. So basically what we've told the compressor is, here's the threshold of pain. When she sings something loud enough to reach that, we want you to turn it down. How much do you want me to turn it down? Well. Uh, about three to one. Let's, let's put this back three and a half to one, somewhere around there. The compressor is basically saying, how quickly do you want me to catch this? Do you want me to catch it right away or do you want me to catch it late? Stop! Let's try this. Stop! So that doesn't appear to be making any difference. Stop! And that's because her voice is not percussive enough for this attack adjustment to be even noticeable. If it was a snare drum, or a bass drum, or a bass guitar, or a guitar, or keyboards, or anything that's real percussive, that attack is definitely going to make a difference. And all I can tell you is that if you're talking about vocals, you're going to have to be careful not to use too slow of an attack. That's the attack. Speed. It's the speed at which 
the compressor is going to grab a hold of her loud note and begin to do stuff with it. Release. It's exactly that. Once the compressor has grabbed the note and it's doing its thing, when she drops below the threshold of pain, she's not singing a loud note anymore. How long do you want the compressor to hold on to those settings before it releases? So that release, if it's all the way down, it's going to be a very fast release. This is a very long release. Look at that up there, 3,000 milliseconds. If she sings a five-second phrase and one note, is loud enough to hit the threshold, it will grab it and lower the volume. However, it's not going to let go of that note for three seconds. A thousand milliseconds is one second. We have 3,000 milliseconds. So if she sings another phrase and it's not too loud, the compressor will still be holding her volume down because the, three, the release is set way too long. Always set this 200 milliseconds, 150, 200, somewhere on there. You're safe around those numbers. Let's listen again. Look at the red meter. Look at how much it's compressing. If it's compressing a lot, take a listen. Time. You know, you know. Okay. It's compressing enough. It's helping the vocal sound out quite a bit. It's making things sound smoother. But. Let's increase the ratio quite a bit and notice what happens to the overall volume. Time. You know, you know. So we've lost volume, but let's just pretend that this setting we like, which would be terrible, but what we've done is we've compressed and changed her vocal so much that we've lost volume of it because the compressor is taking everything out. So in order to get some of that back, we have a gain knob down here. And we need to get some of that gain back. Time. You know, you know. You see, you can hear the pumping. You, that, that's a term that's used when you hear the compressor doing its thing really bad. Time. You know, you know. It's terrible. But that gain is used to make up what you've lost by your settings. A lot of compressors refer to that as makeup gain. Time. As we're back to crazy, lower the threshold ratio somewhere in the middle. 5 to 1, 4 to 1, something like that. Attack, that's okay. Release, that's okay. Now let's listen. Time. Too much. Time. Okay, now it's too loud, so we got the gain up too high. Time. This is no doubt very confusing because I'm jumping all over the place. But all of these things, the threshold, the ratio, attack, release, gain, makeup gain, all of those things work together. Those are five instructions that the compressor has been given by us so that it knows what to do with the sound. So my suggestion when you use a compressor, just don't overdo it. And another good thing, perhaps one of the nicest buttons on almost any compressor is the bypass button. In this case, it's the green comp button, on and off. Hardney, when the compressor goes from not compressing to compressing, the transition between that is either smooth, soft, or not smooth, hard, punchy. Don't fall into the trap of using a factory preset. Experiment with the different settings. Listen with a keen ear and learn how the compressor works. Thanks everybody.